Okay, uh, we are now being recorded. Um, uh, so uh, Chris Kowal, who also goes by the name uh, Calvert, um, uh, the, um, uh, has recently joined Agoric. Uh, have you, uh, Chris, you've already uh, been introduced to this crowd, right? I believe so. I believe we've yeah. all met. Okay, good. Um, uh, in any case, he is now uh, implementing the compartment shim uh, the, and um, the compartment shim, as it had been uh, uh, implemented uh, till now, uh, as, as well as the way in which we'd conceived of the compartment spec until now, was that it was that the, both of them were CES specific. And the operation that, that takes your environment, the realm you're in, and, and changes it from being a normal JavaScript. Um, uh, realm to being a CES realm is called lockdown. Uh, however, the, um, we have since divorced uh, the two in the spec uh, as we needed to. Uh, so Bradley's uh, draft spec um, has, the has the compartment proposal be independent of CES. Uh, we need to adjust the shim to do likewise. Uh, and then, but this ranges, this raises a bunch of questions about um, what does lockdown do given that compartments already existed before lockdown got called, but after lockdown gets called, uh, everything needs to have safety, ha needs to have CES safety properties. Uh, um, Calvert, is that a good summary? I believe so, yeah. Uh, if, I, if I can restate. Um, all, comp all compartments created before lockdown should be locked down. Yes. Uh, if, as long, so long as they share the same realm. So you right. lock down all compartments in the realm as opposed to locking down specific compartments? That's right. That's right. Because, That's because right. They, share, they share a bunch of stuff. In yeah. and because, right. And because lockdown is scoped to the realm, it's not scoped to the compartment. Right. Does that mean lockdown is part of the realm API? No. Um, uh, uh, it's simply a, right now at least, it's simply a separate API. Uh, it's sort of, at this point, the defining API for CES, now that a compartment has been removed from CES, um, and whether it gets uh, bundled in with something else, for example, Bundling lockdown together with Harden, I think, could make a lot of sense. Um, uh, but uh, no such decision has been made yet. Right now, lockdown is simply a separate one function API. Yeah, I think that lockdown could exist even if realms doesn't pass. If realms does pass, I think it's reasonable to call it realm.lockdown. Um, but that's a uh, Oh, uh, uh, uh. Good, good point about realms not existing. So I think the XS case establishes that it should not be on realm because mm -hmm. the way that you should test that you're on a virtual machine that does not support multiple realms or you're in an environment that does not support multiple realms is the absence of the realm globe. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, Sala. Hello. Hi, I already made myself host and started recording. Great. Yeah, thanks. Sorry I'm late. It's all right. Um, so we're discussing the decoupling of the compartment proposal from the CES lockdown proposal and also consequently also establishing that lockdown is also orthogonal to realm, I think. Yeah, so the, the other thing that's interesting about lockdown is uh, that it's not, we can, we can make some further distinctions here than just a transition from normal JavaScript. I think we need to make uh, some more distinctions than just a transition uh, from normal JavaScript to full CES. Uh, and uh, this was uh, is driven by insight uh, from uh, Michael Hunters on, at the last TC53 meeting, um, which is, the uh, you could be on a something that is a machine intended to be a CES machine um, with that, um, but in which the primordials are not frozen yet. Uh, 
for the purpose of being able to run uh, pre, you know, pre um, uh, freezing, uh, pre primordial freezing shims and uh, realm customization code. The various things that uh, XS, for example, uh, runs before their snapshot. Uh, XS, XS, like we have been doing, bundles together uh, the, um, the, the uh, snapshot concept and the uh, freezing of the primordials. Um, but uh, what, uh, what Michael noticed is that uh, you could do the build time running of some customization before snapshot um, and then do the freezing before snapshot uh, and then do some further, at which point you have cess safety, um, but you still might want to do some things that are independent of the target environment after, um, after freezing the primordials, um, but before snapshotting uh, for distribution. Um, so, of course, JavaScript doesn't have any notion of snapshotting for distribution. Um, where this shows up in a JavaScript concept uh, is that um, uh, the IO to the outside world would only be enabled on the other side of the snapshot. Uh, and as I'm saying all this, that's not really a JavaScript concept either. Um, this was not, I did, I, I, I went down this without having thought it through well. Um, uh, I suppose the main JavaScript significant, significant thing is that um, there's taking the JavaScript environment and making it CES safe in terms of all of the repairs. And then there's a separate, uh, a separable uh, transition from actually freezing the primordials. So a, like an XS CES machine um, uh, could start off with all the repairs done. So there's nothing that is inherently non-OCAP safe, uh, but still without the primordials being frozen yet. So you can do the customization and then a separate step for actually freezing all the primordials. So, so I have a question about sort of the causal sequencing of things here, uh, which is there's a, there's a uh, lock it down and make, there's the make it all safe the way it's supposed to be, like we wished it had been from the very beginning stuff. Um, there's, there's a sort of shimmy and polyfilling, which is make the environment behave a particular way because we're trying to be compatible with some future version of, of the language standard, which this engine doesn't yet support or something like that. Right. And then there is environment customization, which is I'm going to set up an environment that's designed for this, you know, this application domain that has some stuff that it's sort of pre-provisioned with. Um, and I, when we're talking about locking down all the compartments that the, the, the seems like there's a presumption there that once lockdown has happened, you can't create more compartments? No, no, not at all. Not at all. Okay. So, so what if you want to create a new compartment that's customized differently than the existing ones after you've done lockdown? How does that work? So it's, it's so the, the purpose of customization is not to, before you call lockdown is not to customize compartments. It's to customize, the realm as a whole, i.e. Right? to customize the shared primordials. Okay, okay. Uh, all the customization that is, that is just customizing a compartment, that's just normal stuff that you do with the compartment. That's what-, that's okay. what the, I, I think there's a subtlety there that's gonna be part of the sort of communication and evangelism portion of this exercise, because I can see uh, application developers who are going to be unclear on that distinction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so 
us finding better ways to explain this is is always something we should be um, yeah revisiting. As, as written, the API will allow for the possibility of a compartment being constructed and then modifying and effectively running a shim from a compartment is possible before lockdown. Um, inadvisable, but possible. Well, so so it depends what you mean by a shim. Uh, if the shim is um, one of the, one of the nice things about the the way in which you can run shims before lockdown is you can take existing off the shelf shims that modify the primordials in place that don't know anything about compartments or cells, mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, those can um, you can just run those and they can modify the primordials by modifying them. Uh, uh, anything that's um, something that's per compartment once the primordials are frozen uh, would either only be modifying global variables rather than modifying the primordial objects, uh, or it would be something that was written with knowledge of compartments or sets. Yeah, uh, it, and it, I, yeah, each I see compartment. This. Go ahead. Yeah, see, uh, Salah has a question. Uh, yeah, so I, I just wanted to thread the, the when you were trying to reach on, on how to describe a snapshot, and I, I just wanted to maybe say that it's what's not in the spec is what came to my mind. And the spec does not talk about FS as in IO of modules from disk or WET. It basically just talks of them as being a host supplied source text of a particular um, um, a key of a particular location somehow. Um, so, so I think it's what not is, what's not in the spec is where a snapshot, um, in, in, in my opinion, could, could really relate to it at this point. Um, not sure if that's how um, you know you meant it. It's it's literally just uh, these per particular paths on virtual uh, file concept uh, has not been articulated in this pack because the concept of a file has not. Um, and and the and the concept of a file won't won't be part of the ECMAScript spec or yeah. CES or compartment spec because that's a uh, host concept. Yeah, but. The general issue of how host powers manifest in CES, yes, uh, without it is a CES uh, issue for for CES to talk about, yeah. Um, as long as it's talking about it in a way that's neutral across hosts. Yeah, I, I think it's going to have to tread a little bit deeper into the abstract not mentioned uh, before. But it's, it doesn't have to say file, but it kind of has to say any host operations on that location. So, so you're, you're going to have to, I guess, add uh, clarity that it's not like anything can come from any location at any time. But uh, so what do you mean by location? So, so if we're snapshotting particular module map, and, 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 and you know, in my understanding, and I was late a bit, and I could be completely off, but that means that particular path is basically sealed. Like um, we don't call it path in, in ECMAScript because that implies file system, but we just call it a specifier location, mm -hmm. like, a, like a resolved location relative to a particular compartment, um, okay. which did not exist when we talked about module map in uh, you know, abstract, um, sorry, in more general, um, um, pre-realm um, uh, spec language. Okay. So yeah, so yeah, this has to do with the whole issue of um, uh, uh, how module locations, uh, the um, which are like typically URL-like or something, how module locations get dereferenced by doing some I/O to an external world um, uh, in order to. Uh, obtain the module static record. Um, uh, the um, and uh, I, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I think that the the way we're approaching this 
spec wise, if I understand, uh, is first of all, this um, uh, solid distinction that we're making that's holding up well between compartment and the importer that plugs into the compartment. Um, and I, don't, I can't remember, I, we, we've changed the name of it so many times, I don't remember if we're still calling it the importer. Um, but the thing that plugs into the, uh, to, the, uh, to the import hooks, that you give it a um, module location, I'm sorry, you give it a, uh, no, not a module location, you give it a full specifier mm -hmm. and it gives you back a module static record. And how it does that is up to it and that it doesn't, there isn't necessarily a file system abstraction uh, from which one can build such an import hook. Uh, there's also an initial uh, import environment that the uh, start compartment uh, mm -hmm. finds itself in that is uh, somehow um, uh, provided by the host already uh, and whether that does file IO or not is again uh, host specific. Uh, in an XS style environment, uh, the answer in both cases is uh, there's no file system really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and about lockdown, I just, for a second there when we said um, you would prepare your realm and lock it down. Um, so so would, that, would that basically say and if you're in a browser and you want to, you know, have another uh, shim or polyfill or whatever, make sure you load those before you start loading your application, not after. Uh, and then this way they would basically uh, traverse into the realm. Okay. Yeah, one of, one of the things that I, I want us to be sure to explain very, very clearly uh, is um, the division between what you do before lockdown versus what you can do after lockdown, uh, such that uh, all untrusted code um, uh, should only ever run after lockdown. Uh, and an analogy that is appealing to me, but I don't know if it appeals to anybody else, uh, is just thinking about um, uh, like a, a retail store owner um, puttering, out, puttering around his shop before he opens the door. And he might have the cash register open and unlocked. He might have money lying around. He might, he might be doing all sorts of things, but he's, uh, do, he's at that point puttering around and preparing to open the door. And things have to internally uh, um, be in a certain state of readiness before he's comfortable opening the door and letting in the uh, untrusted customers. Um, so I see lockdown as kind of that transition. We, we're familiar with that transition in other areas of, um, uh, of you know, software engineering, like a Unix single user mode. You do things in single, the, everything you're doing in single user mode, you're doing as root, and you're doing it in order to prepare to go into multiple user mode. Multi-user mode is, the, is when you start admitting things that you don't fully trust. Having run a grocery store once upon a time, um, um, that metaphor mostly works. Um, the, the main issue there is there aren't actually that many things that fall into the, that category of, of untrusted or uh, uh, potentially risky exposure opportunity things, although it certainly is very true. Um, the other thought that occurred to me was um, um, another life experience thing, which is a, a movie set, uh, which is all of the preparatory activity that goes on. And then when you start shooting, you have to have all of the, the crew out of the shot and you know, all of the various, you know, you don't want to have little bits of, you know, uh, 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 anachronistic uh, you know, objects in the scene. You don't want to see any of the lighting. You don't want to see the boom mic hanging down in the picture um, and all of that. <laughs> you certainly don't want to have a Baratheon with Starbucks in their hand. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, things like that. But, 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 but I mean, just very gross 
you know, large things as well. And, and, and it's a very, and the other part of it is, of course, it's a very deliberate uh, uh, process. Um, I, want, I want to walk a little bit back. Uh, the, the metaphors are fantastic. I think that there are two. Um, I think that what we are setting ourselves up with for with the separation of lockdown and compartment is we want to enable two sensible scenarios, one of which is where uh, an application creates compartments and never locks down, and those compartments need to be able to behave in an unlockdown way. We also want to see, uh, we also want to realize a system where you have, you call lockdown, you, you, you set up your world, you call lockdown, and then you create compartments, and those compartments need to exist in a, in a, in a locked down environment. Um, but because, it, because we have a cross product of compartment and lockdown bits, <laughs> um, I think that the question that I have for this group is what do we do in the cases that we don't intentionally reveal? Um, and that is the case where you have compartments that are constructed before and after lockdown. Um, mm -hmm. So um, uh, what, what behavior do we want and how do we achieve that with the shim is actually my bigger question, um, but perhaps not the right question for this audience. Uh, I think it is, I think this audience is the right audience for that question. Um, uh, the, um, so let, let's, let me start by examining the more ambitious hypothesis and see if it creates complexity that we don't like. Uh, which is um, that we go ahead and uh, 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 enable compartments to be created before lockdown. Uh, uh, after compartments are created before lockdown, we lockdown itself remains enabled. And then after uh, lockdown, uh, you can now still create more compartments. Um, and I'm st still not yet separating two aspects of lockdown, which we should separate. Um, one is all of the repairs um, so that the primordial objects themselves, apart from their, their frozenness or malleability, uh, have good OCAP security properties. Um, and then uh, the uh, versus uh, actually doing the transitive freeze of all the primordials. Um, uh, so, um, so, I would, so uh, if we separate them, then we have potentially three phases. We have uh, compartments used in normal JavaScript, compartments used in repaired JavaScript, and uh, compartments used in prepared and re repaired and locked down JavaScript. Um, and what I would like to examine is that the safety on the other side of the repair transition and the safety on the other side of the lockdown transition is a realm wide safety and therefore grandfathers in any needed safety properties into the already created compartments that were created before that transition. So let, let's, if, if we can get that without a complexity burden, then that's clearly um, uh, the most flexible and the easiest to explain um, uh, because they just sort of remain orthogonal notions in the user's mind, even if we have to do some work. So My, this is going to tie to some, the complexity is going to tie to some feedback about compartments and how they might need to have realms exist actually um, in order for compartments to work out for some concerns for TC39. So uh, we should definitely bring this up later. Um, can you can you say a little so, bit about it? Because we've been assuming yeah. that compartments can exist without realms. Uh, well, we, we might not call them realms, technically. Um, so all of the JavaScript engines as they exist today are not set up for re-entrancy in a variety of places where we were talking about host hooks. Um, 
in particular things regarding time uh, or locale. Um, so one of the requests at TC39 was for us to go back and evaluate how we could avoid reentrancy into JavaScript itself, uh, exposing the ability to call JavaScript in these locations. Uh -huh. um, and it turns out that the way they are set up, a lot of these shared primordials um, are not done on a call site location basis. In fact, a, the engines only V8 allows the theoretical possibility of having two uh, realms and spec terms to be in two different uh, locales and time zones. Um, so that means that in order for us to satisfy the request that these methods do not um, call out to JavaScript, that means they change from a callback uh, API to a push or setter API, um, we need a location separate from the compartment that covers all compartments at once. Uh, all related compartments at once, such that if you assign a time zone or a locale, all the compartments are updated. And my initial thoughts, I haven't heard back from Mozilla on this, uh, is that it would have to live on something that looks reminiscent at least of the realm's proposal. It's, and, and I think that that implies that it would be inappropriate to surface those particular features on compartment because it does not make sense. I, I want to separate two aspects of what you said and see, see if we can tease them apart. Um, one is whether the locale and time zone are obtained by calling JavaScript code. And the, the other one is whether they're scoped to a compartment or scoped to a realm. Uh, one can imagine that if the problem, if the, if, the, if the hard problem is just the reentrancy through JavaScript code, not the scoping, that, uh, a ra that rather than providing it as a host hook in the sense of a callback, you could instead in the, um, the options bag for the compartment constructor, uh, one could imagine that the options bag just contains a um, uh, a, a value for um, uh, the uh, time zone and locale uh, or potentially a set up the location for the time zone and locale if it needs to be changed dynamically for a compartment. Let's, but let's examine the first one first. Um, so it just becomes when you create a compartment, you can say what the time zone and locale is. And then that times, then that compartment is stuck in that time zone, um, uh, but it doesn't affect uh, any other compartments. That's, that's, that would be yes on scoping, no on reentrancy. Uh, so yes, I, I've started taking a look at this. This comes down to a bit about how uh, primordials propagate through execution contexts. So if you perform a lookup whenever you call an intrinsic function that gets access to these values, and it has to look it up on its execution context no. to get no. the compartment it is currently running in, no. uh, that seems difficult. And I well, am- not, Yeah, it's not only difficult, it would, be, it would be a fatal violation of our safety properties. That would be dynamic scoping. Uh, the behavior of yeah. a function should never ever ever depend on the execution context of the code calling the function. To my knowledge, only direct eval and import are exceptions to that case. The, and they are not functions. Uh, you could argue about eval, eval but it doesn't matter. No, direct eval is not a function. It, it, uh, indirect eval, um, I mean, this, this was first thought when we were w during ES5. Um, I don't want to uh, have this discussion. I just wanted to bring up okay. that direct, there are direct, people direct, who argue. Direct, direct eval 
and the import expression are both special forms. And that's why they don't violate this principle. This principle right. of avoiding dynamic scoping is an absolute principle. We must not violate that. Uh, and in order for us to avoid this, we, we need to have these uh, primordials such as the joy of new date um, not actually okay. perform an execution context lookup. So we need That's to right. put them somewhere. And okay. that means on the realm or someplace else. Okay, so, th so date is the, uh, for, for normal JavaScript as it exists today, uh, uh, is date the only place where this comes up? No, it is actually on almost every single um, primordial due to uh, locale string. Oh, yeah. I, I have a, a, a question uh, that just touches on maybe one of the things I'm confused about, uh, which okay. is what is the scope of virtualization? Ah, um, uh, it depends on what you're virtualizing. Right. And just say, who do the host hooks belong to? Does it belong to the department? Belong to so the, the, the somewhere in well, the So, um, uh, so uh, 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 Karidi, I don't, you're off frame uh, visually. I don't know if you're uh, in audio. Um, uh, but um, uh, one of the things that was resolved in a previous one of these meetings um, that um, I would like us at some point to revisit uh, is that uh, uh, some host hooks are about evaluation context. Those are naturally scoped to the compartment. Uh, some host hooks are about a realm-wide primordial set. And Bradley's point just now, uh, because it included the two locale string behavior, I think is compelling to say that those host hooks are uh, scoped to the realm. And then for example, the, uh, the scheduling decisions about which job uh, comes next, um, those are scoped to the agent because the various job queues like the promise job queue, um, these, uh, those, uh, um, those go between realms and between compartments. Uh, they're an agent-wide thing, so those would, could only be virtualized uh, at the agent scope. Now, uh, the- So this does the, agree. This feedback does absolutely agree with some things we're hearing from implementation about. Uh, we, we do need to make a little bit more clarity and uh, in this, so we should likely call out what the scope of virtualization is on each proposal as we talk about them. Yeah. Um, for compartments, uh, like I said, it like Mark said, um, it's roughly the compartment hooks relate to execution context. Right. And so in particular, we need to document how they propagate through execution context is the feedback we're getting from implementers because they're a little bit confused. Um, and so if we can tie things to different contexts, such as the execution context, and then the uh, realm context, at least, or uh, what do they call it? The active uh, realm in the spec? <sighs> I don't, the names are weird, but we're trying yeah. to talk to them. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Um, the, the, the way in which the current spec is written is so desperately in need of re refactoring. Uh, but you're right, the, in order to explain it to implementers today, you have to speak in terms of the terminology of the current spec. Uh, so yeah, we have these two, which are very concrete, and we're not talking about anything outside of those two until we propose a agent API. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here's the thing that uh, I, that was the agreement in a previous meeting with Kariti that I think we will need to revisit, uh, which was that uh, even the host hooks that are logically scoped to the realm, that the API for providing those host hooks 
were still to be provided by the compartment API. And I think there's another way to cut that which fits the motivation for that agreement, uh, which is that the current realm proposal proceeds without those host hooks. And it's a later proposal that adds the realm scoped host hooks to the realm API. Uh, and it might very well be the, you know, the compartment proposal that does that, uh, but which proposal does it is not necessarily tied one to one to what API those proposed operations go on. And I think Caridi was really um, motivated to try to keep them out of the realm proposal to unburden the number of controversies that had to be simultaneously settled for the realm proposal to go forward. I think that's perfectly fine. Um, I know GoDaddy is interested in particularly locale and time zone for some of our rendering. So we definitely should eventually move forward with it. We have an open issue on compartments describing uh, a need to clarify execution context propagation. Okay. Um, most discussions have been light and back channel so far and hopefully that'll change as we get more space between the TC39 meeting and the next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, you might want to save this to when we start recording, but I am curious about uh, the, the, uh, who the back channel communication is with? Uh, it's just regular TC39 members. I think they're just tired from the meeting and not wanting to put out public things until they get a better grasp on what's going okay. on. Okay. Good, good, good. I'm, I'm very, very glad you're engaged in that communication. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so anything that's scoped to the realm um, uh, should be you know, the, the API for it should somehow uh, make it clear that uh, those hooks are for realm scope and you have convinced me that locale and time zone should be realm scoped. Uh, to my knowledge, no other ones are necessarily realm scoped anymore on compartments. We did take out the math random hook. Um, so without that, it's I would say a math random hook would also likely be on the realm, just because that is a shared reference. So the, the um, okay, so the, yeah, so the, so so the time, the current time, the you know date dot now issue, and the math random issue, uh, this is actually a good one for uh, examining the issue that Calvert started with, uh, which is. Um, uh, the distinction between the world of compartments in normal JavaScript and the world of compartments in CES and how we can have them smoothly coexist. For CES, the stance that uh, I very much want us to take for date.now and for math.random uh, um, is the one that uh, uh, we're on record with from the last uh, TC53 meeting, uh, which is that the, uh, let's take date. Date is the better example because there's a shared prototype. So um, the, uh, the date prototype object is a shared primordial. It's dot constructor property is a date constructor that provides no ability to get the current time. Um, so it's the repaired date constructor. This is, the, this is part of the repairing issue as distinct from the freezing issue. Um, uh, uh, the original date constructor that um, uh, from which you, can, you still can get 
the current time remains on the global of the start compartment. Um, uh, and its dot prototype property points at the shared date prototype. Um, but the, all of the, but um, uh, whenever you, whenever an, another compartment is created, uh, it's always created by default with its binding of the global date property for its global bound to the safe date constructor um, uh, so that if, so that it's up to the code in the start compartment in creating a new compartment, whether to provide the date constructor that it has, the powerful date constructor, it can easily provide that as an endowment if it wishes, in which case the compartment that gets created uh, also gets the powerful date constructor. But, but for any of these date constructors, it's dot prototype dot constructor would always be the shared primordial safe date constructor. Okay. I think I'd agree with that. Um, I think we need to, we'll likely get pushback if we ever try to expose those direct hooks though. Um, in particular, there has been previous feedback about the uh, viability of removing all random locations from host APIs, which is something the web was stating they thought would be un infeasible as well as time. I'm sorry, I don't understand the, the you said removing random locations from host APIs. I don't know what, the, what that's uh, referring to. The location which you can get effectively math.random. The, the ability to access some sort of random number generation. So, so, so the thing that I just explained with regard to date, I would also do for math.random. Uh, it's simpler because there is no uh, uh, math.prototype. Um, uh, but basically there's a shared safe math object that has no random property. Uh, this is under CES. Uh, and new compartments get the safe math as their global binding by default. The um, start right. compartment has the fully powered math object uh, and it can endow it forward. But if it doesn't endow it forward, uh, then the other compartment just gets safe math, not math, not math with random. So both, both the right. date solution and the math solution put the start compartment in complete control and don't require any hook API in order to provide that full control. I see. Uh, I, I think yes. a, you've, you've clarified something from the implementation for me that's very useful. And that is that the repair functionality um, that we can layer this API in terms of repairs first and then compartment and then lockdown because compartment does depend on repair even though it's not repairing the, the start, con the, it, even though you don't use repair to on the start compartment. Is that correct? So, uh, so it's, uh, uh, that's mostly correct. Uh, it's still the case that to fit compartment into normal JavaScript, uh, compartment needs to be sensible even in the absence of repair. So right now, the um, oh, I see. Uh, okay. The date, so. the date dot prototype dot constructor is the date constructor. Oh, within the compartment. Well, I'm just in normal JavaScript today. Yes. The um, the date constructor. There's one date constructor per realm. Uh, it's on the global, the global that will be the global of the start compartment. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and the uh, dot constructor property on the date, the shared date prototype uh, points at that powerful date global. So there's still, uh, even if compartments have been created, there's still this distinct repair that can't simply be implied by the existence of compartments, uh, which is to um, 
uh, have the powerful date constructor be on the global of the start compartment mm -hmm. and have the constructor property on the date prototype point at a safe date constructor. So yes, I think we're in complete agreement on that at the JavaScript language level. I think mm -hmm. it is just host APIs that are a concern. Yeah, my, under, my, my impression from hearing what you're saying, Bradley, is that um, there are implementation, there are, there are issues with the implementation factoring on everything but V8, presumably, where there isn't an opportunity to have a different time zone in, a different, in different compartments. Uh, because all of these are just passing through to an underlying system, uh, host level um, time zone uh, library, presumably. Is that, does that, does that reflect what you're trying to tell us? So this is a bit interesting. Most of them don't actually do syscalls uh, directly into the OS. Mm -hmm. um, they are doing a variety of things. In particular, it appears at a glance that they don't uh, let you swap time zones uh, while a realm is alive because they are caching values and it is very expensive to blow that away. V8 does allow you to do that uh, destruction of the cache and it has the ability for multiple caches, which the others do not readily have. I see. So it, it's that the underlying, I assume, C++ implementation of lo uh, localization libraries that doesn't support multiple instances in the same process. Uh, that's what it appears to be true. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I want to I want to make make sure that we're not confusing two things. The uh, with time zone and locale, um, I think Bradley's argument that that needs to be uh, a realm scope took rather than a compartment scope took is compelling and I, I accept that. Uh, the issue that I was raising with regard to the safe and unsafe date constructors was with regard to time, not with regard to time zone and locale. Uh, yes, you've made a good argument that we don't need the hook anytime, to my knowledge. Currently. Right, we don't need the hook because the, sp the split into two constructors uh, provides us all of the flexibility that a hook would provide. Yes, we will likely need to do a review of temporal to make sure that that still holds on that. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, the, um, yes. So concretely what you're proposing, what you, uh, uh, what Mark and Bradley, you appear to agree is that we can remove the hooks from the compartment, the, the pardon, specifically the time hook uh, from the compartment proposal and still have the CES features that we need because we can inject an alternate date. Correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, the, the, yeah. So that, so that's, that's the positive side. Um, the, uh, the problem is that I don't know, I think the, the, how, how the repair coexists with the availability of compartments prior to repair is the thing that I don't understand yet. Um, um, but uh, may, shall I propose that uh, maybe, okay, so does repair cause, uh, does repair to, does repair do harm to the global environment that would prevent uh, existing code that it, that's expected to work in the start compartment to work? Yes. Yes, it would be obscure, but it's definitely not observably different in a way that, that um, can break things, uh, which is uh, before repair, uh, the start compartment's global named date is triple equal to date.prototype.constructor. Mm -hmm. After repair, it is not. So a reference obtained to date before is uh, not going to mix well with the with the date that's obtained after. Yeah. So so let me propose something and see if it applies to all of our repairs, which is all of the compartments that are made 
before repair uh, have the same status and the same danger as the start compartment. And the, um, uh, so you're still in a OCAP system after repair, even the start compartment is, but the start compartment has a bunch of powers um, that are denied to safe compartments by default. Uh, if you've made other compartments before repair, then those other compartments, for example, they also get a date global that points at the very same date constructor object as the one that the start compartment points at. Uh, what repair then does is it creates the, a new object, which is the safe date constructor. It changes the shared date prototype so that its dot constructor property points at the safe date. Uh, it updates its table, it, uh, you know, the internal table inside the compartment implementation. Uh, it updates that table of what are the global, the default globals to uh, put on the global object of a new compartment, you know, the, 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 mm -hmm. the ECMAScript standard safe globals, it updates that so that mm -hmm. for any compartment created after repair, their binding for the global date variable points at the safe global rather than the unsafe global. Okay, so the idea is in general that compartments created before repair are different in behavior from compartments created after. And since we don't, and since that is a scenario which we, that, that isn't in the sensible, that we either put compartments before or after, then we're not going to worry too much about how they mix. Does that sound sensible? Uh, uh, yeah, but it's, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit stronger than that, which is it's not that they're not safe, it's that they have the same status as the start compartment, mm -hmm. which is I... they're, they're still constrained to play by OCAP rules, but they've already gotten powers which they keep. I find that understandable. Uh, Bradley, you were going to say something? Yeah, so this closely mimics the historical way of doing a privilege drop on systems where mm -hmm. you can obtain the powerful uh, resources and stuff yeah. like that. Yep, uh, yep. So it's well understood if anybody wants to talk about it at length. I mean, this is just the mm -hmm. nature of censorship. Yeah, yeah. Creating a compartment is analogous to fork, effectively, that you inherit the UUID of the, or not the UUID, <laughs> the UID of the, the owner of the process. <laughs> and, then, and, and then after you de escalate, you inherit the, the, the new. Uh, owner of the process. That makes sense by metaphor. Sure. I love it. Um, and thanks, Mark. I think that you've clarified for me how to how to refactor it too. Um, of course, I'll have many more questions. Okay. Now that Kurdi is back, I want to uh, check with him my political hypothesis. Um, so, um, uh, Kurdi, in a previous one of these meetings, um, uh, there we made an agreement uh, between the realm proposal and the compartment proposal that I want to revisit, um, uh, which is uh, there are some. Sorry, did somebody say something? No? Okay. Uh, that I want to revisit. Um, uh, there are some host hooks which are naturally scoped to the compartment, those that are about evaluation contexts. And there are some host hooks that are naturally scoped to the realm. Uh, and uh, Bradley just made a compelling case that um, a time zone and locale, but not time. Uh, time zone and locale are scoped to the realm. And the, the thing that makes that really compelling is the two locale methods that are everywhere in the primordials. Um, the previous agreement between the two proposals is that all of the realm scoped host hooks are still provided by the compartment API. And I think that's awkward. 
uh, if it's necessary, uh, we can make it work. There's no, there's no fatal problem with it, but I think it's confusing and awkward. And I can get to some of the awkwardnesses in a moment. But I'm trying to understand um, if we can separate the reasons why we made that agreement. Yeah. Um, uh, one is that we want to unburden the realm proposal itself so that it can face as few controversies as needed to go forward um, uh, by postponing all of those host hook issues. Uh, and I think a way we can deal with that is to say that the realm proposal doesn't carry those host hooks, but a later proposal, maybe the compartment proposal, some later proposal can still propose adding those host hooks to the Realm API. And that puts the hooks in what is, in my opinion, naturally the better place for the hooks to be, while still unburdening the Realm proposal from having to settle those controversies before it goes forward. So one of the reasons we made the decision was also um, the fact that it's easy to teach people that the hooks are in a compartment. And if you want to control what a wrong will do in terms of host uh, interaction, you create a compartment for it and then you go and, and create realms out of it because it's easier to teach. Otherwise, you have to teach that some of these hooks will go here, some of these hooks will go there, and then it's more difficult for people to understand that. So, um, let, so let, 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 me, let me walk you through the, the case that I think will be terribly confusing if we do it that way. Um, right, but um, before, before, before we get into that, um, the, the other reason we, if I remember correctly, the, the other reason that we also uh, talk about was the fact that um, I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I lost my my thread of thoughts. Um, I yeah, it will come back, but uh, it was an important important point there about why we move it into oh um, the fact that most of these operations. Uh, that we talk about, they are not operations that are carry on when you need the value. They are operations that are carry on when you construct a realm. Um, the case of the locale, for example, you don't add a locale every time that you need the locale. You simply add a locale when you build a realm and then you already have it. And, and therefore, and they, and it's not really a hook what you provide is just a value what you provide. That's right. And, yeah. and that so, value so, cannot change over time. Yeah. So I'm on board with it being a value rather than a callback. Um, uh, uh, I think that I would, you know, I'd certainly rather it be a value than a callback. Um, uh, the, here's the awkward case, which is under the current agreement, uh, if I want to create a realm in the French locale, let's say, um, I have to, I create a compartment in my own realm where I tell the, where I use as an option on the compartment constructor, I say the French locale, and now I have a compartment that is still in my original locale, but because that compartment is in my original realm, it's just that that compartment itself has a realm constructor that by our previous agreement, when, that con when, I, when I use that realm constructor to make a new realm, it's the new realm that's in the French locale. The fact that the new realm is in the French locale is not confusing. The fact that the compartment that I created, I, I used French locale as an option to the compartment constructor and the compartment that it made is not in the French locale. I think that's going to create a lot more confusion than whatever confusion we're worried about. So we do have an open issue for this that might also explain it in a little bit more code example terms on the uh, compartments proposal. 
Um, also, I should note that locale absolutely must be allowed to change over time in a realm. It is part of web spec. Uh, there is a language change event. <laughs> uh, so. OK. Um, uh, so uh, whether that's done by um, uh, changing an observed location or it's done by a, 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 a callback, we can worry about what the specific API is. But I, right now, I want to stay focused on the scope. We're, we're also, you know, the different host hooks are associated logically with different scopes. And the uh, scheduling, you know, control of job scheduling has to be associated with an agent API. And if the agent API follows the same pattern, uh, there will be an agent constructor that makes a new agent. It'll have an options bag on which you provide a, a hook for uh, scheduling. So I think that overall, the picture that different host hooks, in order to, to understand what the host hook means, you have to understand what scope it applies to anyway. And then to say that the API that real, reifies that scope is the one on which you find the host hook, um, uh, you know, the, the host hook that's, that, that is of that scope. I think is a more understandable overall picture. So I, I still don't quite understand the the, the, the new proposal. Um, Maybe I can share screen for a second. That might okay. be some clarity. Hold on. So my, I have three specific questions. The first one is, uh, are we talking about a hook on the realm or constructor or the realm itself or are we talking about values that you provide the second question well, I'm, is yeah I'm, I'm being neutral with regard to whether you're providing the value whether you're providing a settable location or whether you're providing a callback hook uh, in all cases it would be uh, a uh, an options in an option bag um, uh, and, and it would be an option in an option bag provided to some constructor. By the, by the previous agreement, it would be an option in an option bag provided to the compartment constructor, but it doesn't apply to that compartment. It only applies to the realm constructor that's created as part of creating that compartment. Um, uh, in the uh, uh, proposal that I'm making now, uh, it would be in the options bag provided in very much the same way with a, with a suggestively similar uh, shape of the API, but it would be in the options bag to the realm constructor rather than the options bag to the compartment constructor. Okay, so my second specific question is what happened when you don't provide it? Ah, um, Is it going to go up to the nearest uh, compartment to find out what the value is? And in that case, then you need to have the hook also in the compartment so we can figure well, it from the compartment? It, so the thing is, if, I mean, given the hypothesis, uh, I will, I'll, let's just stay with, with locale and time zone because I think that's, that's a nice, clear example. Um, uh, yes, it goes up to, um, uh, the previous, but now the previous what? Um, it would actually be the previous realm because uh, the only previous would still be a realm-wide setting, not a compartment-wide setting. Um, and if we do it this way, then it does, then when you create a new compartment, the the creating of a new compartment doesn't have to create a new realm constructor. The realm constructor. Um, like, you know, the, the, you know, the regex constructor or anything else that's safe, the realm constructor can just be a shared primordial constructor. That poses uh, a new problem, which okay. is if I want my default behavior of all the realms that I want to create to be French, then I not only have to create a compartment, I now have to create a compartment that has a realm on it that has French, and then inside that realm, I have to create the other realms. 
uh, I'm sorry, the, the, let me make sure I understand. Uh, the scenario you're concerned about is not just that you want a, comp a realm in which the locale is French. You want a realm, you want a realm constructor that constructs realms by default with the locale being French. Is that the, is that yep. the problem? Yeah. Okay. So if you just construct a realm explicitly with the um, locale being French by using the, by, by explicitly providing the option, then in that new realm, the shared primordial realm constructor, which doesn't have to be compartment specific at all, it can be shared realm wide, but the realm constructor in that new realm will construct by default right. realms with, that are in the French locale. Right, right. That's, that's the problem that I'm trying to explain. Like, in order for me to create a system that contains, uh, that, that allow me to create multiple realms, I have to create an intermediate realm that does nothing other than providing that default behavior. In the previous um, uh, schema, you just need a compartment, a lightweight compartment that defines the hook for returning the um, the the proper locale in this case French, and then you can create as many realms you want inside that compartment that are all French. So maybe we can walk through this example to kind of explain how that simply isn't possible given some constraints we've been handed down. Uh, at TC39, we're given a constraint that we not introduce new uh, effectively JavaScript hook sites for engines to instrument. In particular, uh, JavaScript engines do not provide reentrancy during uh, time zone or locale specific APIs currently, and they do not want to introduce it. So a callback no, I, I, is off no, the table. Right. I was specifically trying to be neutral with regard to whether the option is a value or a settable location or a callback. That's, that's fine. The, the, we can, even if it was a callback, there's a problem. And the problem is this little, like, four lines of code, five lines of code. Uh, say we have one realm and the compartments are able to define their own locales. Um, when you have a two compartments, A and B, A is in English, B is in French, um, they share the same number dot prototype effectively here is the important thing. I just use number, but number dot prototype is the real thing that matters. Um, here, when you actually go and have compartment A create a function that returns some localized string. And you have compartment B call that function. We have to define the behavior here. And there's, a, there's basically three possible options that I've identified. Um, they get it from their call site, meaning that this locale string is indeed going to be in English because they look up the uh, locale from their call site. Uh, this means looking it up off the execution context to find the current compartment they're in. Um, we had this discussion a little bit earlier in the meeting about how that's pretty much unacceptable for our ideal, ideas of security and things. Right. Um, option it's two. Complete, completely unacceptable. Um, option two. Um, the first execution context is the one that wins. So when you first allocate a job, the first execution context gets a special privilege of defining the hook. This is horrifying to me. Um, we should never do this, um, mm -hmm. but it is something we can talk about. Uh, so I, I, I would be incredibly surprised if the code in my compartment that defined its locale to be English ever returned French. Um, that would be very 
not good. Um, and then the third is compartments are not the right layer for this. Basically, because they share the same prototype, the same dot two locale string, they they cannot actually have any variation except based upon the call site. And so this somewhat matches some clarification points that Yulia was trying to ask for about what is the exact scoping difference of realms and compartments. So this is trying to bring about even if we created a hook and we convinced the engines that they wanted the ability to call out to JavaScript uh, for that hook, we would be attaching the hook to call sites rather than to uh, the compartments themselves and doing so violates some of our desires. Yeah, so, so let me, let me, so, uh, um, so first of all, let me just state the constraint that I think decides, that I think disqualifies most of the choices that are written down here. Mm -hmm. uh, the constraint that is followed absolutely in the language uh, is that uh, the behavior of a function, I'm sorry, it's absolutely in the language ignoring sloppy code, um, uh, is that the behavior of a function never depends on the execution context from which it is called. It never depends on the caller. Um, that all of these context issues are structural. They're all, they all follow sort of the, the lexical scoping dogma. Um, so uh, whatever um, the behavior is of a given uh, number dot prototype dot two locale string function, it has that behavior independent of who called it and therefore it must be realm scoped. It's the only possible answer. Yeah, I mean, um, the, I, I don't have any issue with, I, I mean, I, I, I share the same uh, concern that Mark still mentioned. Uh, the, the hook in the compartment is not for the code, is not in this particular case for the locale, it's not for the two locale string to hit it. It does not hit that hook. The hook is only going to be hit it when we create a new realm that needs that information in order to build intrinsics. Right. So my, my problem is that, um, okay, so first of all, to get the reentrancy issue off the table, let's assume, let's just assume that the locale and time zone is provided as a static value. And I understand that there's this web requirement to be able to change it dynamically. Let's just ignore that for the moment. Um, so it's, uh, so there's some options bag on some constructor somewhere where you can say, you know, well, how colon uh, quote French unquote, or however you say it. And that creates a new something that knows about the French locale. Uh, and then um, uh, the problem with that being in the options bag for the constructor is it does not apply to the, to the, to the, I'm sorry, to the compartment constructor, the options bag to the compartment constructor is that the compartment constructor creates a compartment and that compartment is in the realm, um, uh, you know, that pre, you know, is, is in the realm that the compartment constructor itself is from, uh, and therefore it is not in the French locale. It is, let's say, in the English locale. Um, uh, and that the effect of providing the option was only indirect by requiring that each new compartment get a new realm constructor as well as a new compartment constructor only for the purpose of enabling the realm specific hooks to be provided indirectly to the compartment. So to me, it's very confusing that you, that you say new compartment locale French, and then you get a compartment and you start executing that compartment and you're in the English locale. Um, I, just, I just think that that's terribly confusing. Mm -hmm. um, now, 
to 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 re, let me to recapitulate Peridi's objection posing instead. What I'm proposing instead is that the realm constructor also have an options bag that the uh, locale colon French option be in the option of the realm constructor options bag. And Curdy's objection is that uh, if all he wants is a realm constructor that defaults to French, rather than a realm constructor that you have to explicitly uh, instruct to create a French locale realm, uh, that he has to create a extra realm that uh, explicitly in order to have a realm constructor that does that by default. And um, uh, so first of all, Kriti, have I successfully represented your position? Yes, and if you, if you, if you, uh, if you want, I can give you a concrete example when that is needed. Okay. So I don't know if this example is representative, I haven't tested, but if I have an application whose, uh, whose settings are defined as a uh, French, um, and I create a same domain iframes on that, and what will be the behavior of the iframe that you create? And I, uh, I don't know what, what level of propagation we have there, but, uh, but we can find so, out. Okay. So, I have a oh, suggestion here. Oh, yes, go please. ahead, Mark, if you're still going. No, go ahead, Michael. Um, so would it be possible to create a compartment and endow with a realm constructor that defaulted to French? And then use that to create all your sub realms. Uh, yes, but but that's not the API that is being proposed. The API that is being proposed that that, that is the API because we're we're not creating no, the, the API. API with the hook. No, the API that Marx is proposing is that when the realm is created, it needs to find the nearest realm rather than the nearest compartment. I think yeah, the... I'm not suggesting find the nearest compartment. I'm suggesting the endowed realm constructor from the compartment would just override whatever the defaults were provided. Uh, so uh, part of my suggestion, so, okay. So where does the new realm constructor get those defaults from? I create a function called realm. I, I say call the original, I, or I call de default to French realm as a new function. I call the original realm constructor with the, the same arguments that I'm given, except I override the default to be French, the locale to be French. I provide that realm, new realm with French, realm with French constructor as okay. an endowment to a compartment that it becomes the realm constructor and then I use it there. Okay, good, good. I, I didn't um, get that. So uh, this try? is somewhat similar to what we were talking about with math.random and date, except instead of replacing uh, the constructor for the purposes of censorship, we're doing it to change a default value. Right. Um, we're talking about within the compartment API, we do have this endowments option. And within endowments, you could provide a wrapping of your realms, global realm constructor. And that wrapper, although not referentially equal to all the compartments, can change the options bag on your realm to have French within it. Can right. you repeat you create, that? You, uh, you, you just create a function that acts like the realm constructor, wraps the real realm constructor. I see. So you're wrapping the realm constructor. It just wraps the realm constructor and it wraps it for the purpose of acting like a realm constructor with the other default. And that's exactly how the shim itself creates a safe date constructor out of the unsafe date constructor. It, it seems, yeah, I, I think that the, I think that I would agree that it shouldn't be necessary to tangle this with the compartment, uh, tangle lo, setting the lo, default locale through the compartment or even the realm API if we have a way to curry options on the realm constructor to get a new realm constructor. So that, that the, the, the wrapping, um, uh, option here. What happened if I create a compartment inside a, that that other compartment? 
if you create a compartment inside the, I'm sorry, if you create a compartment inside what? So you have the compartment that has this wrapping mechanism in place. And in, in that compartment, I create another compartment. And then in that compartment, I create a ROM. Is it going to get the wrapping version of it or not? It, it would get the endowed version, which would be the wrapped version. If, if, I, I believe your question boils down to do compartments constructed within compartments inherit endowments? Yes. yes. No. And the answer is no. And then, oh. then the answer to that is that if I create a compartment and a ROM inside that, it's not going to be French. Yeah. Um, because mm. you, that's not what you said you want. I mean, that's not you, the. No, I'm, I'm, I mean, what we're saying if you create a compartment and you can do something in that compartment that guarantees that the default behavior from that point on is all French by default, um, I'm, I'm content with that. But in this particular case, is not because if you create another compartment inside from that point on is not endowed anymore so if if endowments are not carried through to uh nested compartments um what is the expectation there um I, the, there the expectation is that that um is is endowments are uh, assumed to be powerful uh, and therefore they're only passed forward explicitly, that in the absence of explicitly passing them forward, um, uh, what you get is a safe compartment. Now in this case, it's not a question of safety because there's nothing less safe about being French than being English. Um, uh, I, I, we had a very bad bug from French Canadian a while ago. Uh, that paused. Yeah, they're trouble. <laughs> wait, wait, is this the so, bug where there were extra U's in words? No, this is where they used periods to separate numbers instead of commas, and <laughs> they relied on only dealing with commas. So, a uh, quick, quick thing here. If the subcompartments do not inherit endowments, then what if I'm using an endowment to try to cover up a host power? I believe. Michael, can you ask the question again? So your concern about the reason for not forwarding endowments is that they are powerful. But what if the endowments I use are less powerful than the power I'm trying to hide? Can you give an example? In this case, realm. Let, let's say the let's say the default realm constructor understands what the default locale is, but they do not want to expose that default locale. Okay, yeah. So so our assumption has been that we've been thinking in terms of uh, what we mean by power is the OCAP notion of power, as in the ability to cause effects, uh, and locale is certainly not that. Uh, but under that notion of power, the assumption has been that the default compartment in the absence of providing an explicit um, uh, endowments uh, is, that it's, it, it, is that it's powerless, that all the powers have to be provided explicitly. Uh, this case is interesting. Right, it's just a question of changing defaults among things that are equally powerful. So, yeah, so what, what if I change the compartment constructor in my constructor, in my uh, default compartment too? Yeah. You can do that. Yeah. You can do that. So, but this does bring up the, this uh, inheriting of behavior uh, where endowments can be less powerful did relate to what we talked about with date and number, um, where you don't want a nested compartment to suddenly gain access to time if we provide a date constructor as an endowment that is less powerful. And I think I, I had a question also that is uh, treading on that. Um, so we're saying a compartment will have a virtual realm con constructor or uh, you know, like a proxy somehow constructor of a realm. Does that mean that the trickle down um, um, restrictions on that compartment 
can suddenly be uh, circumvented by having um, more uh, closer to the realm access to whatever constructs the realm. Because if a realm can still inherit, um, you know, on a more global level, uh, not just um, endowed, then, then I think it can leak some things that don't pass through the, uh, the same um, distortions, maybe is the right word here, um, that it took to get to the um, compartment itself. Could you, could you um, uh, uh, walk through that with an example? So um, maybe I can give, a, uh, give that more of a top down. We can say uh, compartments um, can be nested or are we saying that, or they're they're absolutely just inheriting endowments at this point? So uh, compartments are um, mostly uh, they're just nested directly under their realm. Uh, okay. There's only one way in which there's only I mean currently there's only one way in which uh, they're nested directly within each other according to the creation tree, which is the module map. Uh, the okay. module map. Um, is specifically a mapping from child name to parent name, um, and that maps, and then the parents module map maps from its names to its to the grandparent. Uh, so, um, so since we do have a fine-grained notion of a module creation tree within a realm, it's conceivable we could add more semantics to that, but so far we have not. So, so the endowments object, since you know, since we get to deploy that, it, it could be used to imperatively mimic the idea that you're taking globals and you're restricting them and then you're passing them down. So you wrap your globals and you're starting to, you know, put put uh, constraints on them, and you're creating compartments that are logically not, in, uh, you know, nested, but uh, functionally they are because that's how you've constructed them. Um, now, if that one of those compartments can now create a realm, then that trickle down that you uh, programmatically enforce on the compartment could technically be circumvented by running code in that realm that would not um, have, uh, you know, the same um, restrictions on endowment. And I don't, I'm not sure uh, if I support so that. I'm, I'm thinking it's a different concept than endowments that we're trying to talk about. It's the concept of restrictions or defaults or something that we want. We want this to trickle down, but we don't want endowments to trickle down. That's what I don't understand. But I, I fear, fear that in order for us to get that working in that way, we are going back to this idea that uh, one extends the other, compartment extends realm or vice versa. Um, and I would like to get some clarification on why why do you think that it, the, the resolution should be from realm to realm um, rather than from realm to the nearest compartment because the compartment the compartment instance is executes code in a realm in which Number dot prototype dot two locale string still acts according to the English locale. So to say that that compartment instance is a, a, has a, a French has a French locale is to is to my mind something that's deeply confusing to the user. But that's that's only I think the ergonomic hassle there is just something that can be fixed by putting the right names to those hooks. So if the hook says the resolve the local value, yes, I, I agree that it's very confusing. But if the hook is to um, only be used by realms, created like a sub -realm that compartment or something? with the pro proper name, then it's, it's not going to be that confusing. So Michael, you were saying? Like sub realm defaults as opposed to locale and yeah, all some, 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 of, some of that, some, some of that that could be the a hook that allow you to define what are the values wow. for the, the creation of a realm. You know, when the realm is created. 
Yeah, specifically how to tame the realm constructor is what these options would be for. Right, right. I feel. The default value for the realm constructor options, yes. Something okay. like that. And it's going to only be triggered when the realm is created. And you know when the realm is created, you have a point in time where you can actually uh, define those values. Right, when the realm is created or when the realm constructor is created? When, when the realm constructor is, 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 is executed, yeah. Okay. Um, so let me, it sounds like there is enough depth to this conversation that we can conclude the following at this time, which is that the realm constructor, the realm proposal go forward without hooks in the proposal uh, and that it be up to a later proposal how to add realm scoped hooks to the spec and that whether that's done by options to the compartment or it's done by options to the realm constructor or is both. to be determined, but it is not the case that the realm constructor proposal goes forward in a way that locks in an assumption that later proposals cannot add options to the realm constructor options bag. Yep, I'm fine with that. Like, yeah, well, if, if I understand that correctly, what you're saying is we have to define a sort of a meta mechanism that gives a place for the hooks to go without saying what the hooks actually are. We need to do both, but yes. Well, eventually we have to say what the hooks actually are, but the That's right. problem we with deferring that question to a later proposal is that implementers have to implement something. Right. And implementing the realm proposal itself, they're implementing no host virtualization. The realm proposal I, has no host virtualization. I see. The so realm this, constructor might, but the, but it would only have it according to a later proposal. So this gives you the compartment. This achieves the compartmentalization goal without achieving the virtualizability goal. Right. Mm -hmm. And and if virtualizability is in fact an eventual target, we need to make sure that we've at least uh, uh, paved the way so that it has a natural place to drop in as opposed to opening up another can of worms later where we have to go rejigger a bunch of stuff that we can't because it's now locked in. Yep. Well, one kind of virtualization that has to be in the first rendition of compartment, at least, is the import virtualization. Um, that's that's unavoidable and perhaps strikes a precedent in how, how virtualization looks. Yeah, um, there'd be a lot of virtualization coming in with compartment. Uh, the, the nice thing here is that we preserve the uh, political win or the, the strategic win in terms of, uh, of completely unburdening the realm proposal from having to propose any virtualization mechanism. I'm still unclear on where this will live. I, at least in my current thinking, is putting it on the compartment constructors not a good idea for now. So we I, might- I'm a I, I, yeah, I can, I, for now. <laughs> I yeah. kind of see it as a taming option in much the same way that we need a taming options for different kinds of objects. We'll need a taming option of some kind for how a sub realm within a compartment is supposed to be instantiated. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I'm not, yeah, I, it's, it's on compartment is all I'm saying. Yeah. yeah I'm, 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 I'm with Bradley on that in terms of my preference. I certainly agree that we have not settled it in this meeting, uh, but we've, we've settled, how to settle it. Um, uh, but the, the way in which I would like to see it go forward is that there is no per compartment realm built into the proposal. That um, if you want to create a realm-like wrapper 
and make it a, a global of a compartment, you can just do that in user code to achieve uh, Caridi's stated goal, but that the actual, uh, uh, what we're proposing for the engines to support is that the realm constructor itself be a realm wide shared intrinsic. There's no other reason that I can see why the realm constructor should be per compartment rather than per realm. So this is an important thing moving forward. We do actually have to decide if it's per compartment or not, but we don't necessarily have to expose a hook to instrument or tame it. Can, can, uh, can you provide a little bit more details on why do you think that that's a, a problem to have a yet one more um, global constructor that you replace at the compartment level, just like you do with eval and capital F function? I personally do not have a strong opinion, but they must be separate if they have separate behavior. So, must be separate so if you have the ability to configure a realm constructor within your compartment via an option to the compartment API, that means you need a new realm constructor within that compartment. That's new right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I agree about the if then. And uh, what I'm proposing is that there should not be any built in mechanism to customize a realm constructor per compartment. So, so you would just do this in the start realm or in the primal realm. You'd say my realm constructor does this and then everything that inherits from that would use it. The, um, the, 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 start, the start compartment, the, um, uh, if I wanted Either to replace- Either CES or without CES. Either yeah. CES or without CES is what I'm saying. But before lockdown. Uh, once you've locked down, you've committed to the primordials. Um, so in terms of a shared realm constructor primordial, um, uh, replacing that would have to happen during customization before lockdown. Um, uh, so that's uh, not my question. My question is, uh, what is the problem with the compartment to provide its own realm constructor bound to certain things that are uh, provided by that compartment, like hooks and such? Okay. There's no technical fatal problem there, uh, which, which, which is why the previous agreement remains implementable. Okay. Um, uh, the thing is, I, it's, it's, it's a, yet another thing to explain. Right now, the, the things that are on a, that are uh, on a uh, per, created per compartment by default is the function constructor, the eval function, uh, the date object, the math object, and the compartment constructor itself. And the compartment constructor itself is because of this uh, multi-level mapping of the import map. So- uh, it, and, it sounds and, like Rome said just one more in the bag. <laughs> well, it, yes, it's one more in the bag and each one is, is, is expensive. It's expensive just in terms of being another thing to explain. Um, uh, so I would, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I said this wrong. The only ones that are created by default, created by default on a per compartment basis is function constructor, eval function, and compartment constructor. The date and math thing is only a distinction uh, of the start compartment versus other compartments. They're not created on a per compartment basis. Um, so it's really only three right now, and four is a lot more than three. So my key takeaway isn't actually the three to four. Uh, it's that we, we have a desire for these taming of math and date, potentially temporal, uh, coming up. Um, it seems like adding a very specific hook might not be the right approach. These are, this is somewhat a symptom we're starting to see as the number of cases expands. And so having a specific call out to customize the realm constructor without having call outs to any of the other ones is something that doesn't seem like we've 
properly uh, described the problem. Um, so Isn't for now- the same, sorry to interrupt. Isn't that the same providing a, a hook for eval that describe what eval can do and how it works? So I would argue no, because the key takeaway of everything is that things within a compartment are being hooked on an execution context basis. And when you create an evaluator, you do actually create an execution context within the compartment. And when you create a realm, you're creating an execution context, not within the compartment itself, but a separate one. Well, with the, the ability to create execution context outside, not you're not actually creating a single execution context. Would the notion of distortion be more applicable here? Uh, say more. Uh, in in the sense of rather than special casing the options you pass for constructor for date or for math or for realm, you have a you have a general callback from the constructor the compartment and constructor that says, this is how I wish to distort these things in my subcompartments. That would be a, uh, how is that different than a procedural callback, uh, you know, callback hook? It's different in the sense you can use it to create the object in the global, but you can't use it as a general callback that just keeps getting called each time. So, so what I'm saying is that this transformation that we're describing for date and for math, if we could implement that in terms of what is a default kind of distortion that we do on a given compartment, that we apply for all compartments, not just the start, or, but not the start compartment. So um, I, I would need, need need to see something. I would, I need more to imagine it. I don't have a concrete picture in my head for that. Yeah. I, I think where you decide to leave the, the issue for now, though, is a good good place for now. I don't know if we have to go further than that. Yeah. Um, As I know, on the, what uh, Bradley mentioned about the, the change language locale, um, I don't think, I just want to clarify that I don't think it is what Marx thinks it is. So this is an event that is happening at the window level in browsers that triggers when the user changes the settings. I do not think that it has any material effect on the, on the realm itself. I haven't tested. The spec doesn't say anything about that, but I do not think it changed the realm's uh, internal. Uh, it does uh, blow away on Chromium and you get new locale strings afterwards. When you say you blows away, what, do, what does that mean? There's a very large locale cache in all the browsers. If you are in, say, Japanese, and you change to English, and you call to locale string before the change and after the change, you can see differences in Chrome and Edge. But Edge is Chromium. Yeah. Uh, if you guys could post links uh, after after we're done here, post links um, maybe to the SES strategy mailing list or something uh, of the uh, things to read to understand what engines do right now uh, with you know locale and time zone and how dynamic it is. Are be you okay reading C plus plus or just no <laughs> no no I am not. <laughs> I'm okay with reading Bradley's text explaining what the C++ does. Sure. <laughs> That's going to take right up. I can try that Monday. <laughs> Surely this is for religious reasons, reasons, Mark. I'm sure you know. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't know I, the details I know, for sure. I, I know C++ probably second only to the details to, the, to, to which I know JavaScript and Java. It's probably mm -hmm. the language in which I've had the third greatest expertise as well, and probably second most in terms of total hours programming in it. And I would like to never read another line of C++ <laughs> for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah don't, I don't know the details of how it works, uh, but um, my, at least a recommendation that we have for, for people creating 
interactive applications that do catch a bunch of locales across the board. Um, it's just to detect the change and refresh the, the page. Um, if, if we can uh, segue at this point without losing any context, uh, since I have Bradley on the line, um, and Bradley, since you're writing the proposal for compartment, uh, I just wanted to surface some thoughts that I have from uh, wrangling with the shim implementation. Um, one of the things that I'm trying to think through is uh, that I, I expect compart uh, that, that we are going to need to use compartments in order to implement um, per package uh, per package specifier namespaces. And one of the, um, yeah, so, so to be clear, the, the, my assumption is that at some point we're going to write some code that creates a compartment for each package um, in uh, like, for example, it might take a package lock.json and then assemble, uh, assemble a compartment for each of the packages in that package lock and then, uh, and then initialize them. And uh, an imagined requirement I have is that uh, we want to fully separate the load and execute phases of the module system. Um, and the, com the most compelling reason I can think of for wanting to do this and for the reason why I did it in previous module loader implementations was so that the same system could be used to um, load the transitive dependencies of a particular program without executing any of it as a preface to building a bundle. Um, yeah, that's really good. And uh, to that end, I think that we will need to uh, add some features to the compartment proposal. Um, I'm not exactly sure what they are yet, but one of them is that I think that we will want to be able to thread a linkage record through the module map um, instead of uh, uh, instead of the um, instead of a module instance um, so that we can defer execution. Um, I... And then and then consequently have some way of getting linkage records out of a compartment so that they can be threaded through to um, depend uh, the compartments that depend upon them. Um, go ahead, Mark. So I was thinking that what we need is a way to get a module instance, um, uh, you know, something that designates a module instance and to use, a, to use actually a, um, a, a um, completely uninitialized module namespace object um, uh, to, to uh, represent a module static record as to be instantiated in a particular compartment. Yes, so, that, that, that is where we left off from our previous conversation for sure. Okay. Um, the question then is, uh, so suppose that you have, um, suppose that you have, um, after load, what you have is a graph of linked module locations to um, linkage records internal to one compartment, right? Um, and each compartment has its own graph of module location to linkage record because they um, don't necessarily, they, they don't, they, they, it is possible that the keys are, uh, refer to different values in each of, uh, in each of those compartments. Um, so the question becomes how to, uh, since we have deferred execution, how do we then, um, how then, we, how do we then actually link all of these namespaces and begin execution? And, um, and execution is dependent on the compartment from which the linkage record was created, right? Because we have to thread the compartment evaluate um, for each individual linkage record. So um, I, I was I was hoping to not need to reify the concept of the linkage record. Mm -hmm. So um, I think yeah. this is a very long discussion. Uh, that we don't have time for in this meeting. Maybe you could set up a uh, rough outline of what you want to do. Uh, it sounds very similar to actually what we've talked about previously with the ability to set up import now hook, um, where you, you can roughly pre-initialize some data 
including the full linkage is being set up and necessarily we might just need to tweak uh, our APIs around that. Yes. I don't know if we actually need to separate out the two phases. We already have the resolve phase. Maybe the resolve phase just needs the ability to um, have more uh, linkage happen when it begins. Because even in the situation you're describing, you need a rough set of entry points. Because unfortunately, there can be multiple entry points at the top level of your compartment. Um, mm -hmm. it, it seems like we need that resolve hook necessarily to be able to eagerly do work that it currently cannot do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm going to fiddle with this with our implementation. Well, once I've decoupled compartment and lockdown, which will probably take me. It, basically, we can, we can start next sets with this topic. Uh, I just wanted you all to be aware that I'm thinking about it. Good, good, good. So the, okay. one thing, the one thing while you're doing that is we currently don't have a way to delegate out to your uh, outer uh, context, your outer compartment, uh, to get a full specifier. Um, without that, it may be difficult for you to achieve your desires. Um, mean the, okay, the full specifier or the location? Uh, the full specifier. You cannot perform a resolve on your default. So when you create a compartment, it has a resolve hook. We do not actually expose a direct means in which to perform a resolve within that resolve hook. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if we're having a terminology problem. Ooh. Okay, so resolve takes a uh, full specifier and a name of a module to import. Um, we, it is a function. Within that function, we must return a full specifier. For okay. argument's sakes, this is a string. Mm -hmm. We yeah. do not have a way within an implementation of resolve hook to perform a resolve where we don't okay. want to yeah. actually perform an import. So we do have the import expression to get access to a module. Um, uh, just to double check, this is also related to another issue that I need to address with the implementation we have in place. Um, we need to have a resolve function uh, that is purely logical and usable from any node style namespace. Um, specifically, that's uh, like uh, the, the, the shim we have right now has a make rooted resolve uh, or make rooted resolver function, which takes a location as a root as an argument, which we need to take out um, because we need to separate the concern of having a root location. Um, like resolve should be purely logical from the names uh, from uh, the full specifying namespace of a particular component, um, and anything dealing with locations must be a product of the locate function. Um, and the good the 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 nice thing about this is that nodes, specifically nodes resolution semantics, um, require us to have. It is possible to write one resolve function that behaves that is sufficient for every com every node style compartment um, that just does logical resolution and separates relative um, uh, relative full specifiers from uh, or pardon uh, relative specifiers from full specifiers. I'm not exactly right. I don't know if I've got the notation exact uh, the, the terminology exactly right. But if you have a if you have a specifier that starts with dot or dot dot as its path component, the resolution of any of uh, the resolution of from any of those specifiers must result also in another specifier that begins with dot or dot dot in order to distinguish the internal from external namespaces in Node. Um, 
So I need to write that at some point in probably in, in the next week um, uh, in, or, in order to do a faithful emulation of node semantics. Um, so it's a slightly different resolve function than the one we have spec right now. Um, which I say mostly because uh, I, th I think that it's important for us to it to clearly differentiate what resolve and locate are going to do for us because locate is going to be compartment specific, but resolve while being hookable is going to almost always be the same function. Right. The, the resolve is to go from refer relative specifiers to um, to full specifiers which are uh, still only meaningful regarding the a compartment, um, but, but at least refer independent. And it's really just about things like the slash algebra and mm -hmm. resolving all of those things. Yes. And then there's a separate mechanism to go from full specifiers to module locations, where module locations are, are really for uh, retrieving um, whatever information is needed to build a module static record from somewhere where it's, it's up to the retrieve to figure out um, how to interpret the um, module location. So I, I, I think I mean, this is all from, um, you know, from Michael's uh, importer architecture. Um, and I think that's a very nice separation of terminology. Uh, 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 refer relative specifiers versus uh, compartment relative full specifiers uh, versus uh, module locations that can uh, that um, one can, from which one can retrieve uh, module static records. Yeah, um, but Bradley, I think that you were trying to make a point that we don't yet have a mechanism for exposing a compartment's internal resolve or locate abilities, which might need to be used from outside of the compartment in order to do linkage. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not exactly, I don't have a precise idea of what that needs to be, but, uh, but I hear you. In nodes loader hooks, we have a concept of the default hook. Mm -hmm. We are not exposing the internal form. We are explicitly trying to get the more powerful external form so that we can do defaulting behavior properly. Um, Def so, uh, can you be more specific about what you mean by defaulting uh, behavior? So node has a default resolver. Um, if you perform a loader hook on it, so you have now changed the uh, behavior of resolve, you still often, almost always, want to have the ability to perform the more powerful hook, the original one, before adding a loader hook in order to resolve to certain APIs. That is what I'm saying you will most likely need to do in order to do this eager uh, graph creation. And we don't have any way of passing that in right now. I see. All right. Okay. Um, Chris, also, can you just go and clarify the terms that you were using on the compartments proposal? We might need to rename hooks because it seems like we are using different terms. Um, uh, which ones in particular? The import now hook and the import hook are returning static module records in which you were calling those locate. Uh, the, in, um, in which document? Uh, the proposal compartments readme. On the bottom there is in compartment constructor options. Mm -hmm. There is an import hook which returns effectively uh, a promise from a full specifier, and the mm. promise result is a static module record which can be used to create a new module record. A new module instance, sorry. 
the module instance, right. So uh, I don't think Chris was proposing, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think you're proposing to change that from module static record to module linkage record. That would still be a module static record. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Chris, Chris wanted to introduce the notion of module linkage record in order to solve the problem of how do you express the um, cross module linkage graph among module instances. And I would rather do that just with the module namespace project. But in either case, the import hook would only be a module static record. Um, for compartments, as long as we do not do cross compartment imports, that is true. Yes. Anyway, uh, uh, we should probably have a short meeting about this sometime, Chris. Yes, we should. So, yes, sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the recording on this one because I'm exhausted. <laughs>